encounter between Jesus and a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was described as a chief tax collector and rich. He has heard so much about Jesus of Nazareth that he wanted to see the Lord and as Jesus passed through town. But because he was a short man, he could not see over the crowd. Knowing that Jesus would pass by a certain uh, sycamore tree, Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed the tree, figuring out he could see Jesus passing below. Zacchaeus did not think himself important enough for Jesus to notice him, but he wanted to see Jesus. To the astonishment of Zacchaeus and the crowd, Jesus stopped under the tree, looked up, and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus was overjoyed, but the crowd grumbled because he was a tax collector, and they could not understand why Jesus would choose to associate with such a man, a sinner. Zacchaeus, however, was so affected by this incident that he stood up and declared, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus happily proclaimed that salvation had come to Zacchaeus' house because he too is a son of Abraham. Well, this is a reference to Zacchaeus' faith because those who have faith, the faith of Abraham, can truly be called the sons of Abraham. It was not in vain that Luke placed this story towards the end of his gospel narrative because, for one thing, he used the opportunity to declare the primary purpose of our Lord's mission. He came to seek out and to save the lost. In every culture and tradition, taxation and tax collection have been a sensitive issue. In some countries, the question of taxation and tax collection has brought down powerful governments. Well, if you remember the United Kingdom during the time of Margaret Thatcher. You understand what I mean? And I'm also reminded of one of the colonial wars in eastern Nigeria in 1929, when women from the eastern region uh, spearheaded a protest against the colonial system on women, the colonial laws at the time on women, and the tax, and also the corruption of the tax collectors at the time. Now, closer home, the IRS is nothing to compare with the tax issue that we read this morning in the Gospel. Let us look at the statues of a tax collector during the, during the time of Jesus among the Jews. Who were the tax collectors? And why did people bear so much hatred towards them? Probably in every culture, in, a, in, in every part of history, from the tax collectors of ancient Israel to the IRS we have today, the tax man has received more than a fair share of scorn and rejection. The New Testament indicates that the occupation of a tax collector was looked upon with, dis with disdain by the general populace. The Pharisees expressed their displeasure for tax collectors in one of their early confrontations with Jesus. In Mark's Gospel, we read that while Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, 
Many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many of them who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus also used the commonly held opinion of tax collectors as an illustration of the final stage of church discipline. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, when a person is excommunicated, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. In other words, the excommunicant is to be considered an outsider. Well, there are a few reasons for the low view of tax collectors in the New Testament era. First, no one likes to pay money to the government, especially when the government is an oppressive, oppressive regime like the Roman Empire of the first century. Those who collected taxes for such a government had to bear the brunt of public wrath. Second, the tax collectors in the Bible were Jews who worked for the hated Romans. These individuals were seen as traitors and betrayers of their own countrymen. And they, they, they were seen uh, enriching themselves at the expense of their fellow Jews. Well, don't forget that the chief tax collector in the story we heard this morning in the gospel they made his confession to the Lord and mentioned his past dishonesty. Third, because of their scheming, the tax collectors were well to do. Well, this father separated them from the lower classes who resented the injustice of their having to support the publican's lavish lifestyle. Also, Jesus used tax collectors to stress the fact that we should love our enemies. To emphasize the point, he said in the Gospel of Matthew, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? Giving the law esteem people had for tax collectors, it is noteworthy that Jesus spent so much time with them. Let's not forget that he called Matthew, a tax collector, to be one of his 12 disciples. At a point, Matthew was throwing a feast for, the, uh, for his friends because he wanted his circle of friends to meet the Lord. And many believed in Jesus. Jesus responded to the Pharisees' indignation by stating his ministry purpose. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Pharisees saw tax collectors as enemies to be shown, but Jesus saw them as the spiritually sick to be healed. The Pharisees could offer nothing to the tax collectors except a list of rules. Jesus offered them forgiveness of sins and the hope of a new life. No wonder tax collectors like Matthew and Zacchaeus were transformed by the gospel and followed the Lord. John the Baptist's message was that all need to repent, not just tax collectors and other obvious sinners. The Pharisees couldn't see their need for repentance and refused to be categorized with publicans. To the self-righteous, Jesus said, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, 
but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. We know how Jesus responded to those who had murmured against him for associating with tax collectors, as he said to them, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus also said elsewhere, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Amen. Mm-hmm. 